today's show <clears throat> is brought to you by True Classic Tees. Now, y'all seen us wear these tees on the show before, man. Extra comfy. And I love the fact that when you're talking about the design of them, I talked about, man, that athletic tailored feel, but at the same time, a little bit more room in that men's section for the guys that used to have them six packs that no longer reside with six packs anymore. But either way, man, it's a dope site, man. They got dope material up there, man, in terms of the T-shirts, long sleeve shirts, sweatshirts, sweatpants, things like that, man. And as D could tell you as well, they do feel really nice and comfy, man. So I definitely like that. But yeah. more important, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is true. This is definitely true, man. But more importantly, we got a promo code for you, baby. That promo code is MOTES. If you use that, you get 25% off at trueclassictees.com, baby. So, like I said, man, don't waste time, man. Get with the cool kids, baby, because these shirts for guys or ladies, you will enjoy them. Okay? Trust me on this one. So, shout out to True Classic Tees. And more importantly, shout out to them for sponsoring today's show. So, we can go ahead and start talking our three things we like. And three things we don't like about these New York Jets. So, obviously, I like to start with the positivity. So, everybody in the chat, we need your participation as well. Drop three things that you like about this New York Jets team in the chat, please. Three things. Only positives, though, right now. We'll get to the negatives in due time. But right now, just three things that you like about this Jets team. All right. <clears throat> Well, I'll start, if that's right. cool with you. Yeah, yeah. I'll do my one, do you do your one? Cause I see you still screenshotting everything, too, right? Perfect. Yeah. But um, for me, man, I got started with Garrett Wilson. Uh, he's a dope receiver, smooth route runner, uh, nice burst. Obviously, we know he was a big-time dude coming out of Ohio State. Put the uh, world on notice with his nice speed at the combine. And, you know, even with the different styles of quarterback between a, a Zach Wilson and a Joe Flacco, to me, man, Garrett Wilson – Still one of them dudes, man, that is developing nicely in this league, man. So he's the first guy for me, man, in terms of something that I like about this uh, New York Jets team. Uh, secondly, so I'll just do all three of mine real quick so sure. you can get caught up. Sound good? I'm good. I'm caught up. Oh, you are? Uh, yeah. You want to go one then? Sure. All right, drop your first name, man. What you got? Uh, first one, Zach Wilson. Okay. I just think he's a leader. Mm -hmm. He's someone to look up to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Had a good off season. <laughs> He had a good offseason? Yeah. I like what he brings to the table. Yeah. Yeah. He did have a pretty good offseason from what I heard, man. Had a good offseason. Yeah, man. Uh, man of the people. Exactly. Man of the people, man. So Zach Wilson is on my positive A list guy that's easy to root for. Easy to root for a guy like that, man. Just, you know, nice, wholesome guy. Went to a nice university, man. Just just clean cut. Good guy, man. Overall good guy. Yep. Went where a lot of uh, people don't think they can go. Yeah, yeah. You know, did did the unthinkable, you know? People say you couldn't. He said, watch me. Mm -hmm. You know? He's one of those guys, man. I could definitely respect that, though, man. Is your mom going to the game on Sunday? <laughs> no. Are any of her friends going to the game on Sunday? No. All right, just checking. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, they'll be far away. Same. I'll, I'll tell, I'll put my mom back on a flight. <laughs> she flew back to VA. I said, mom, you got to get up out of here. Is that a PSA yeah. to all Steeler Nation? I'm just you, saying. You keep your moms and your grandmas at home? Listen, all you mamas <laughs> out there, all you grandmamas out there, all you aunties, all you aunts, all you aunts, however you want to say it, Zach Wilson's coming to town. Okay? He's coming. Be careful. That's it. It's true, bro. But I, I can respect the heck out of that, though. I like that right there. All right. The second thing for me, man, bro, Sean McCartney called him a man of the mother's face. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. He's a man of the mothers. He is, man. He definitely is. He definitely is. Golly, man. But uh, the next thing that I do like about this team is their rushing attack. Um, not necessarily in the sense of it being scary, but just in the sense of, man, I think they have two really good running backs uh, in terms of um, Brees Hall and uh, Michael Carter. Man, I think that one-two punch is really nice. I also like how their offensive line in the run game, they do win the line of scrimmage. Um the big thing that I think is the knock on their rushing attack is that they don't get enough attempts, um, especially in this past game when you're watching them against the Bengals. 
they were having success running the ball. The problem was they fell 20 to nine in the second quarter and they were forced to just start throwing the ball a lot more. And that's kind of one of the themes with this Jets team when they're able to be balanced and, and keep that rushing attack um, in play. That offense is a lot more dynamic. The offense is a lot more explosive when they get one dimensional. That's when they really start to struggle. But um, that rushing attack is definitely something for me that I like about this team, man. Well, I'm going to basically be combining your first two answers into one. Oh, well, let's cook then, play it. And say they're young talent on offense because mm -hmm. I'm with you. I really like their running backs, Michael Carter, Brees Hall. Their yards per carry is actually really like nice four, right now. They're both averaging like over four a carry, absolutely. Yeah, and Brees Hall mm -hmm. is bringing some stuff in the passing game as well. Michael yeah. Carter can do that too. but And then even on the season when you look at their uh... – three game overall like yards per game average they're still averaging i want to say like 4.4 4.3 yards per game as a team rushing the ball also which is good when you're talking about that four that four yard mark being that magic number you want to be over that yeah yeah it just has to do with game flow they've gotten down mm -hmm. in all three of their games thus far and yeah. they've had to pass it more and then the receivers garrett wilson he's looking like a stud he's looking like he could be a franchise receiver already and Apparently he's healthy. He got banged up in that Bengals game. Yeah, but, but he came. He came. We didn't hear anything or, yeah, from it. Like, yeah, he's yeah. not listed as questionable or having any type of nagging injury. Yeah. So it looks like he's going to be good to I go. I think he wondered, was it like a kidney, like liver shot type thing? Because you saw he kind of got hit like on the side. Yeah, like, initially I rear. thought it was yeah. a helmet to helmet or he, mm -hmm. something with his head. But then yeah. when you saw the replay, you're right. Yeah. It was just a body shot. Mm-hmm. And then the other two receivers are good, too. Corey Davis, now, I don't think he's a number one, but I think Yo, he's, he's talented. Yeah. If he's your two or three, Absolutely. that's solid. And then Elijah Moore, mm -hmm. he's another really good receiver, a guy that they drafted not this year, that but was the year prior. Year, yeah. yeah, he has some dynamic playmaking ability. And then their tight ends aren't bad either. Tyler Conklin, mm -hmm. CJ Usama, they brought over from the Bengals. So yeah. like, I just think the talent that they have on offense is solid. It's something that I like. I like that then. I like that. So the last thing for me that I have um, that I like is their uh, DBs and more importantly, Sauce Gardner. Um, the reason I like their defensive backs, I think that, number one, they're a well-coached unit. They kind of reflect their coach in terms of Robert Sala, um, in terms of being fundamentally sound, physical. All their secondary guys are not afraid to tackle. They fly to the ball. They communicate really well also. But um, seeing Sauce out there, and especially this last game, he does bring added edge now we're trying to see um because he did start to do some of the following guys around thing towards the second half of that last game but um i do want to see you know more of that from him because he's looking like he's a guy that can hold up on his own but at the same time he's not somebody that at this stage i think we should fear just yet but as a whole i do like their dbs though man. i think that they have a good group right there and um shoot if uh if i remember correctly they should have had an interception on joe burrow they just dropped it you know but to me, man, I like their DBs. Well, it's basically a copy of my answer on offense. This is my third one, right? Okay, yeah, what you got? I'm just going to do it for the defense. Mm -hmm. I like their talent and particularly some of their young talent on defense yeah. with Sauce Gardner. Mm -hmm. That was a great pick for the Jets. Was. Quinn and Williams on the defensive yes. line. Him he, and his brother been straight, but his brother, he's not going to be out. He's hurt. Uh, Quincy, I think he's a hamstring, I want to say. Yeah, and then do we want to consider Jordan Whitehead and DJ Reed, young talent? They kind they're of are. Yeah, still on the younger side, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're what, like, like CJ Moses, like the guy I say, has crossed over. He's not young. You right, know? exactly. Yeah, and Jordan Whitehead, that mm -hmm. was a big pickup for them in the offseason. And DJ Reed's been playing really good these mm -hmm. first three games. So you combine all that. I mean, Quan Alexander, he's borderline young still. Nah. He's been around, but Quan, he's probably like, man, what? Quan, Quan got to be 26, 27. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's How old is 28. he? 28. Uh, talented, though. Quan Alexander. Yes, talented. very talented. The very only talented. problem with him is he's been banged up. He gets hurt a lot, yes. But they got some names on the defensive side of the mm -hmm. ball that, yeah, if we're not on our P's and Q's, who knows? Yeah, Jets defense can actually do something. Yeah. <sighs> they definitely could if they chose to, but... We will see. We will see. But those are the things that we do like. So let's see what the chat said they like about this Jets team. All right. All right. All right. Where are we at? Where are we? Seeing a lot of Zach Wilson comments. I am seeing that as well. Oh, Troy Mason Jr. He says he likes Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, or Garrett Wilson and Zach Wilson. Excuse me for that. All right. I do like those three players as well, man. Honestly, What's up? if we're talking about Zach Wilson, though, in it's terms more of so 
on field play. No, no, no. You got. Is there anything like we like that that much thus far? Now no. he's got an arm. He's got he's got some mobility. No, there's nothing to that extent. But, he hasn't really put it all together though. <laughs> but you got it, it's it's full body of work. All right, right? right. It, it's a part of it. He has the intangibles, the things you can't point to and say this is a stat. It, you actually, like his upside. He has a lot of upside. A lot of upside, man. You know, he's a gamer. We mm-hmm. definitely know that. You know, he could perform in big moments. Fair. All right, the moment's never too big. So I do like that about him, man. All right. Uh, Adrian J says, Garrett Wilson, Robert Sala, and Sauce Gardner by Bay. Let's get it. Darnell Thornton, number one. Quarterback coming back off of injury. Mm-hmm. Glad to see young athletes beat an injury. True, true. Two, Le'Veon Bell ain't there anymore. <laughs> Three, Sauce Gardner. Sauce that dude, bro. I like it. All right. Richard Stone. Shout out to Richard Stone. He says, number one, the Jets chant. Now, all right, I'm going to get to that in a second. Number two, Garrett Wilson. And number three, the skills positions. I can respect that. Now, I got to go back to your first one, Richard Stone, the Jets chant. It is a dope chant. The J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. It is hard. I agree with you. I personally can't stand it. I despise it. I hate it with a passion. But that is also because I played in Buffalo and I would hear that chant multiple times. And during the time when I was playing in Buffalo, the Jets were actually really good. LaDainian Tomlinson, Sanchez before the butt fumble and all that type of stuff. So we, unfortunately, we heard that chant in Fireman Ed too many times. So now anytime I see that chant or I think of that chant, it triggers this PTSD that makes me get real rigid, cantankerous and aggressive. You catch my drift? So even though I like that chant, I can't stand that chant. But appreciate you, though, baby. Hi. Brian, what I like about the Jets, he says, one, they aren't our treat. They aren't our treat. I don't know what that means. Two, Joe Flacco now has two eyebrows. And three, MILFs. Bro, what? (laughs) Yo. (sighs) Yeah, he did come into the league with, like, a unibrow. Yeah. He was like Anthony Davis, refused to shave it. Davis still has his, right? He still hasn't shaved his. My yeah. God. He still hasn't shaved his. Well, bro. yeah, he owned it, so. Yeah. It's literally his nickname, The Brown. Yeah. That is different. It is different, but, you know, to each their own. All right. So those were the things that they like and that we like. But now, you know, we got to spin the block and hit them with what we don't like about this here Jets team. So without further ado, let us know in the chat the three things that you do not like about this Jets team. First thing for me. Is their past protection? Oh, baby, this offensive line. Mm, 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 mm. They are very banged up, very unhealthy. And the guys that they have out there have been struggling as well. In particular, their left tackle. That, to me, is the one that you circle. That's the one that we all got the smiley face on. And we're saying, uh, Alex Highsmith. Go ahead, thank your lucky sack gods, because this is the one for you. Yes, it is, man. But their pass protection as a whole, um, whenever they get into the obvious passing situations, they struggle. And that's part of the reason, you know, when you talk about the significance of stopping the run this week, the teams that have made the one-dimensional have really been able to take advantage of this offensive line. And they're not getting any better because they're not healthy. Um, I believe this is their fourth and fifth different tackle that will be starting this week. When you're getting to that level of your depth that's not a good situation when you watch uh these guys on film it shows it shows in a major way man and that's something that when you're talking about matchups alex heisman is going to have one of those matchups against Connor mcdermott man where you know he got to take advantage of this thing man but their pass for is the first thing that i do not like well i think this has been how many times have i used this one the first three weeks <laughs> Might have only been the Browns. Maybe I did it with the Bengals. I can't remember. No, the Patriots. I, I kind of used it whenever I was talking about them doing something shady, cheating. Yeah. But with the Browns, I said I don't like the organization, the mm-hmm. structure, all, all that type of stuff. But They sabotaged El Bell career, man. We don't like them for that. Who, the Browns? No, the Jets. Odell? I said they sabotaged El Bell's career. Oh, oh I thought you said Odell. Yeah, no, no. They sabotaged El Bell's <laughs> career, man. We don't like them for that. Or one could say maybe it was Elbow. No, 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 no. They sabotaged the same way Matt Canada sabotaged Ben. That's my new narrative. The Jets sabotaged Elbow. Fine. So, <laughs> with the Jets, it's the organization. It's actually looking back to everything we talked about 
with the likes mm-hmm. because on paper, we even talked about it in the off season. Like their draft was nice. It they was. got talent on both sides of the ball. They Unfortunately, do. they do have some of these injuries, but you're just wondering where's the stability, and maybe mm-hmm. that's the thing I'm I'm really focused on here because they haven't won a Super yeah. Bowl since the '60s with Joe Namath. Haven't been relevant since the early 2010s with Mark Sanchez going back to back AFC mm-hmm. championships. They had that one year where they almost made it with Fitzpatrick, but outside of that, oh, yeah, they've that been year. absolutely irrelevant. And mm-hmm. there's been turnover left and right with coaches and quarterbacks. So I'm just sitting back, like, man, I, I like Michael Carter. I like Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, sweet receiver. Their tight ends are good. They Offensive talent, line, yeah. when healthy, isn't as bad as what it is right no, now. No, when healthy, they got a squad. Like they got high end talent on that uh, defense. Line, whether healthy. you're talking defensive yeah. line, they have linebackers. Mm-hmm. They got some good dudes in the secondary. Mm-hmm. They have a decent team. I'm just like, bro, how long is Zach Wilson gonna be there? How long is yeah. Robert Sala gonna be there if they go like five and twelve this season? Mm-hmm. And that's just not good for an organization. So it, it doesn't feel like there's any continuity. As much as you want to talk about the talent that's there, I just yeah. don't know how much you could really buy into everything working and getting together. No, that's like the Jets. Points, that, that's like the Jets yeah, in a nutshell. That is. That 100% is, man. So I could definitely get behind that, man. You just really just dunked on their whole organization like that. That's crazy. That's what it is. I mean, them and the Browns. It's just... <laughs> he just he just broke it down. Like, hold on, let me let me talk about them as a whole family real quick. I I don't like your mommy or your daddy. Okay, and your auntie, she ain't nothing either. I, I get it, bro. I like it, man. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. They go like yeah. five and twelve or six and eleven. Salah's gone. Yeah. Maybe they're talking about drafting yeah. Bryce Young. Come and on now. Wilson out of town. Come on now. But even if they mm-hmm. don't draft a new quarterback, you're bringing yeah. in a whole new coach, whole new system and stuff. You're starting from the top. How do you know yeah. about this young talent if you don't have that type of stability? So that's something I think as Steelers mm-hmm. fans we take for granted. No, we do Tom. at times. But, yeah, stability is key, man, especially for those younger guys developing. Um, the second <laughs> the second thing that I, uh, I don't really like about this team right now is – they're pass rush. They don't win one on ones. They game, and that's how they generate pass rush. But as a whole, when you watch their front, it's not a lot of one on ones being won. They like to blitz. When they blitz, they can generate some pressure, but it's still not consistent enough. And um, when you're talking about what that could potentially do, you put that secondary on a little bit more of an island. Now, like we said, man, Sauls Gardner and company, they've been playing really well, but they still have had some. Some times, I mean, that Bengals team, they were still having some success throwing that ball, taking shots downfield on this unit right here, man. To me, why can't we do those similar things? I think that we have the matchups out there in terms of our receivers versus their DBs. It's going to be good, yeah, but I think you give these guys chances, man, because I don't think this is a group that you have to be afraid of. But more importantly, you're going to have the time to do that because this pass rush, to me, is not like anything that we've really seen. Put, put of it more so like, or think of it more so like the Patriots in terms of how they would generate pressure. We talked about like, you don't have to really look at one player and say, hey man, this is a sure. mismatch. If they were going to win, it was going to be an effort play. J- Matthew Judon chasing a guy down or it was going to be a game, right? The two interior D linemen running their little twist and that's how they came free. That's the, sim- the same thing with this Jets team right now. Carl Lawson's a good player, man. I liked him a lot, but he's still recovering. He doesn't have that same burst that he had pre Achilles injury. So you can see that with him where it's like, yeah, he flashes, but it's not back just yet. And until it does, that was one of the guys that they brought in free agency wise a year ago to be that pass rusher for them. And they just don't have it right now. Right. Outside of Quinn and Williams on their defensive yeah. line, who's really scaring you? Like, seriously. Mm-hmm. No one. So for me, my second one, it goes hand in hand with your first one whenever you're talking about the offensive line. Yeah. It's just more injuries. They got three starting offensive tackles mm-hmm. that are down. Mm-hmm. Makai Becton to start it off. They bring in Dwayne Brown in the preseason to replace and he gets, him. He got hurt literally before he gets the season hurt. started. It was like the first week. It was right. crazy. He's still on IR. And yeah. then George Fant, mm-hmm. he gets placed on IR just this week because he got hurt he got in hurt. last week's yeah. game. So that's tough. That, that leaves, like you said, Connor McDermott being the starting left tackle. And I don't know if you got a scouting report on him. Because he played a couple seasons up I in do. the Bills, but I he's do. looking more like a journeyman backup type of dude in the league. And that's why we got to be excited about Highsmith going on. Yeah, when you talk about Connor McDermott, I think that he can give you some good uh, push in terms of the run game. 
he can cover you up with his size, but when it's time to rush the passer, he struggles with the speed rush. He struggles with, you know, guys being able to take the edge, and it's just a hard thing for him. Um, when you look at how Trey Hendrickson was beating him, it was beating him with speed around the edge. It wasn't a ton of, well, he got to outwork him. It was just get off, get to that top side of him, and now you're seeing Connor not really be able to stay square, and, he, you know, the technique starts to fall out the window. But in terms of the run game, he can give you that. And that's the part when you're watching him, it's like, yeah, as long as they're on schedule and you have that offense balance, it's different. But once he gets to the point where he has to sit there and pass block multiple plays in a row, that's that's where he gets got a lot. And that's one of those ones you're talking about Alex Highsmith and where he's at right now, his trajectory. Man, this is a perfect game for him to keep adding on to what he's been doing for us. Yeah, so that's my second. Yeah, the injuries they've been sustaining. Also, they have Quincy Williams hurt on yeah. defense. That's not yep. that's not going to be helpful. Not at one all. One of their starting linebackers. Absolutely, and he's playing well too, man. He was playing well. Um, but for me, man, my my third and final thing, I put QB play. Now, this was when I made my wow. list. It was obviously before I knew about Zach Wilson coming back. I wasn't the biggest Joe Flacco fan, even though it was funny watching Joe. He still got that big arm. He definitely does. He don't got anything else, but he got that big arm. That, for a fact, is still there. It is a cannon. Holy smokes. But whether you're talking Joe Flacco or Zach Wilson, I'm just not overly enamored with either one of those guys at this stage of their careers. Quarterback-wise, I think that both of those guys struggle to take care of the ball. And when you're talking about this team and the turnovers, they are really bad in that department at times. I think they're minus four on the season. And literally for them, man, the one game that they won – that was when they actually broke even with the turnover margin. The rest of them, they've been losing them. And part of that is with this quarterback play, man. And that's why for me, man, I had that up there as my third dislike in terms of on the field. Now, he's talking off the field. Now, Zach Wilson, hey, 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 my brother. You keep doing what you're doing. You know, we're going to put your jersey in the rafters one day. But on the field, I'm not a fan. It's funny. That's literally my third. Yeah. I, I had yeah. it split. I was going to say the yeah. quarterback situation uh-huh. right now and then also the turnovers. Yeah. It's split because are the turnovers specifically due to Joe Flacco? Now, some of the guys have been putting the ball on right, the ground, but Joe Flacco well, no, has been the, the one Joe Flacco, fumbling and yes. throwing picks. He's been fumbling with the strip sacks. Michael Carter's fumbled, put the ball on yeah. the ground a couple times. I will say this. In that last game, and shout out to Let's Go U-Dub. He was going to enjoy this. That last game, the pick that Flacco threw, the first one, the second one was a tip. We ain't tripping on that. That first pick, though, the Logan Wilson one, bro, that was an incredible play by Logan Wilson, man. My man was showing in the A gap like he was going to blitz a la Troy Palomalu style. And then was the middle runner on Tampa 2, making the interception 25 yards downfield as the middle runner. Heck of a play by him right there. The same play that Minka Fitzpatrick picked versus the Patriots, where he jumped across and got it. And I think that was us playing running it. Yeah, same type of play, but Logan Wilson is in the A gap showing. Comes up out of that thing, full sprint downfield, picks that thing, and has a dope return. Fumbled it, but it was still a heck of a play, man. And when I saw it was Logan Wilson, I was like, oh, you know, that's that's the homie right there. That's that's let's go you dub guy right there, man. So, you know, I definitely was happy when I saw it was him. But yeah. Yeah, turnovers. But then turnovers. I also don't like Zach Wilson coming in. How he is right now, uh, really not too much practice. I think it's, it's going to be the same situation as Joe Burrow. Right, I think it's yeah. going to be the Joe Burrow effect. Mm-hmm. And Zach Wilson, I just don't think as a player is as good yeah. as Joe Burrow. Could he actually become pretty decent? But no, mm-hmm. not right now. I mean, you look at his stats from last year: yeah. nine touchdowns, eleven picks, mm-hmm. lackluster. I know he's got all the talent, but for them in this game, I, I don't like that situation. Because even if they were right. going to start Joe Flacco, it'd be the same thing. Of like, exactly. I don't really like your quarterback situation. He's yeah. turning the ball over a lot. We know who Joe Flacco is. You guys are averaging like big on. two and a half turnovers a game yeah. right now. But it's crazy. They're averaging the two and a half turnovers, but you look at like yards per catch for these receivers. Everything right. is like 11 Oh, Joe plus, Flacco. Isn't he like top five in bro, passing what? yards this yeah, year? Yeah, but he's just straight bombs. It's, it's either a big completion or it's three incompletes in their punt. Like it's, it's no in between. We got, like, the reverse. We're more, like, conservative, 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 one shot downfield. They're like, shot, 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 shot. All right, we'll see what we got down here real quick. But, yeah. Yeah, because if you want – they are going to go with Zach Wilson. Yeah. I don't like that for them either because I think he's going to be mm-hmm. rusty. Yeah. And I still don't know if he's good yet. Yeah. The jury That's going to be man. what this season's about. That's what yeah. this season should have been for someone like Trey Lance. But luckily for Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. he didn't suffer an ACL in that preseason. We're actually yeah. going to get to see it play out for him. No, very true, man. Very true. All right, so let's see what the people said. Were there three things that they did not like about this New York Jets team? Darnell Thornton. Right. One, their fans. Two, their weather. Hmm. Three, having Joe Flacco. Ooh. He kept it simple. I like that. I like that. 
Jeez. All right. Let me get, let me find where I'm at in this thing. Hey. Uh, Brian, what I don't like about the Jets, they drafted Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis? What? Someone like Darrell Revis? Darrell. Darrell. <laughs> I was like, who's Darrell Revis, man? Is that that's a Pittsburgh name? It, it kind of just flows the same. Oh, all right. Cool. Fair enough, then. Darrell Revis. Darrell hey, Revis. Hey, hey, mama called Darrell. Right. I'm going to call him Darrell. It is Darrell Revis. You made me nervous. I was like, bro, who's Darrell Revis? Right. I thought I didn't know somebody. I was like, bro, maybe that's his real name. Mental slip right there. It's all good. It happens no, to the Darrell Revis. Man. No, you're 100% yeah. right. The green helmets they're rocking. Ooh. Uh, he is four, actually. Ooh. Two. Yeah, the green helmets they're rocking. We'll say that's two. Three. Okay. Drunk Joe Namath on Monday Night Football. <laughs> I guess it's a Jets quarterback thing. <laughs> Three. The ex coach Rex Ryan's foot fetish. Gross. Yeah, he is a foot guy. He is definitely a foot you guy. You didn't have Rex Ryan up in Buffalo. I right? did not. I missed him. I was I was Doug Marone. Yep. <laughs> Rex was interesting. I had Mike Patton who was like coming right from under Rex and it was so funny because like he's like the exact opposite of Rex and he's like the first one to tell you, hey guys, I'm just as smart. He's like, I'm just as smart as Rex. I know all that stuff, but I'm not how Rex is. I'm not going to come in here and big guarantees, big statements, all this other stuff. He's like, no, I'm I'm an undersell, overperform guy. I was like, I like this. I can get behind this. But yeah, man, no Rex for me. No Rex. <laughs> All right, we got Adam Abdallah. Whoa, didn't Rex? Did it? Am I wrong on this? Mm-hmm. Or did they just do some goofy thing on Sports Center? But didn't he get his wife? It was like tattered, a picture, right? a picture of his wife tattooed on his ass with yeah. a Mark Sanchez jersey. Yes, yes. That actually accurate. happened, or, no, or no, it was, it was it like a joke? Kenny no, that Main it, segment? it happened. Um, when they that went actually to the happened. AC, was, I thought it was when they went to the FC Championship. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's like a legit thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That it did. Yeah, yes, that's yes, funny. Yes. Adam Abdallah, number one, the line. Two, receivers. Hmm. Three, run game. Defense has a chance to end this easily. I don't want to say easily because, well, you know. Granted, it was Nick Chubb, but we are coming off of a not-so-good performance. Again, stopping the run. That's all. But hopefully we do make it easy. I hope we do, man. But it's the NFL. I just, you know how it goes, man. William Cecil, I don't respect their O-line. I think Reed eats, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Two, not confident in their quarterback. Same kind of situation as us. Three, communication in the red zone, as Mm -hmm. been seen in the All-22. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, because the touchdown to Jamar Chase was a mixed communication with uh, Sauce Gardner and the linebacker. Personally, both guys were at fault in my eyes, man. If you're Sauce Gardner, you got to know you're working with a linebacker, bro. A linebacker is not going to be worried about that quick exchange. They trying to just lock the guy they're locking on. So don't even try to expect him to help you or pass it. Just say lock it and play. So that was that first part why we put it on Sauce. And then for the linebacker, he's at fault because if it wasn't communicated that you was locking it, well, then that's a quick exchange. You need to twist it. You need to pass that. Now, granted, you're going to be passing it to a Jamar Chase, and I don't want my linebacker on a Jamar Chase anyways. But if that is communicated, one of them two dudes, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I, d- I definitely saw that, what you were talking about right there in terms of their red zone communication. So, yeah. 